Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, Kathy, I'm sorry, you were inadvertently muted. Could you play that last section? I wasn't I'm, muted the whole time, was I? Uh, no, you were not, just the last section. <laughs> I apologize. And everyone notices that she's playing only on the black keys for this pentatonic medley. So just the last section, yes. Did, yeah, did you get Amazing Grace? No. Okay, we'll do Amazing Grace.
ยมอร์นิ่งวิลล์โกรฟอิตส์กูดทูบีอินเดอะเฮ้าส์ออฟเดอะลอร์ดทุกวันนี้เราแยกตัวกันในพระมหากษัตริย์ของประเทศมหาชนในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยกตัวกันในช่วงเวลาที่เราแยก This morning in worship, we are grateful for the leadership of our musicians and for Barbara Staley, who will serve as our liturgist. We give thanks for all those that have helped contribute and have done work behind the scenes um, to bring worship together this day. And we also give thanks for the amazing gifts and graces to gather in this way, um, to share in our prayer life together, to give word to our joys and celebrations and our thanksgiving. Things, even as we look forward to and hope for God's um, new revelations, let us move forward now in this time and share together in our call to worship, as is found in our bulletin and led by Barb Staley. And Barb, just give us a second until the bulletin gets up there. Okay. Please join me in the call to worship. How much does God love us? God, God loves, loves us enough to send, send the divine, divine heart, heart, hope, and spirit to us, not to condemn us, but to save us. By God's good and precious grace, are we saved? May our actions and our words be a reflection of His grace. Today we will lift our voices in praise. Thanks be to God. We will now uh, join together in the opening hymn. Now thank we all our God.
light, too often, too easily, our eyes are drawn down, God, to the suffering of victims and the pain of perpetrators, to the wounds we inflict on others and the wounds we inflict on ourselves. We need to see these things and pray, but we also need our eyes to be lifted, God, to the signs of your life among us to the touch of your healing on our souls, to the cross that casts its liberating shadow across all human affairs. We need our eyes to be lifted, God, so our hearts may be filled with faith and hope and love. Amen. Amen. The scripture this morning is from John 3, verses 14 to 21, and I'll be reading the New International Version. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Life has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does, not, who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. 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 There'll be a pause here for a technical issue. to this Cradle of his arm when he knew 
I had been battered and scorned So if it had not been for the Lord on my side Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? He never left me all alone He gave the peace and joy I'd never known He answered when I knelt to really pray and in victory the Lord brought me his way. So if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord? On my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Our second scripture this morning comes from the book of Numbers, and this is a wonderful passage to sit side by side with our gospel lesson, a gospel lesson that is very, very familiar to us in which uh, Barb so competently shared with us. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Now, before I share our Old Testament passage, I wanted to just back us up. So many of us know this gift of this scripture from John 3, 16 and 17, verses that have been shared with us often since our childhood because they in, in a certain way, summarize the basis of our faith and the gift of grace that we are given in the life of Jesus Christ. And yet sometimes in its familiarity, we forget the context out of which this particular passage comes. The story of Nicodemus asking about what does it mean to be born again? We displace it um, or we do not read it fully in its context, but in the midst of the transition between the verses in which Jesus um, shares with Nicodemus what is required to be born again and born of the spirit, there is also the sharing of this short verse, the very first verse that Barb read that perhaps you might have missed. Just, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Let us just bow for a moment of prayer before the sharing of our scripture and the meditation on our word this day. Gracious God, we come to you today. We come to you today with many thoughts in our hearts and from many different places, having been through many different trials and tribulations, but Lord, also with the experiences of your grace all around us this week. Lord, as we come now into this space, these prayers which are bubbling up in our souls, help us to release them truly into your presence that we might hear how you are speaking into our situation, that you will provide with us in this time strength for the, the next days that are co to come and, and for this day, that we to remember ourselves saved and healed. 
by the gift of your Holy Spirit and the presence of your son, Jesus Christ, with us. Amen and amen. The snake lifted up by Moses. Okay, so now I ask you, which of you out there remembers this story? Which one of you remembers this story well, perhaps from your childhood or from your sharing in the learnings of our scripture? Well, perhaps you have heard it before. It is definitely a bit less known to us and less common. And perhaps it is even because of some of the difficulty from which it comes in the story, but in many ways reflects the difficulty and the challenge of our own lives. We hear these verses from the book of Numbers, our fourth book of the Old Testament scripture. We hear this, these words as the people um, are complaining once again, uh, complaining about the circumstances in which they find themselves, complaining and looking backwards at what life had been um, and the, what they believed to be the gifts of the, of the previous years and previous seasons while not truly looking at the reality of the day, the reality of the day in which they found themselves. And so we hear the Hebrew people where it says, then they marched from Mount Har on the reed, reed seed road around the land of Edom. The people had become impatient on the road and the people spoke up against God complained against God and Moses and said, why did you bring us up from Egypt? Did you bring us up to Egypt to kill us in the desert where there is no food and no water? And we detest this miserable bread. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people and they bit the people and many Israelites died. The people went to Moses and they said, we have sinned. We have spoken against the Lord, our God, and against you. Pray to the Lord so that he will send the snakes away from us. And so Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, may a poisonous snake and place it on a pole. And the Lord continued saying to him, whoever is bitten can look on this snake and live. And Moses made a bronze snake and placed it on a pole. If a snake bit someone, that person could look at the bronze snake and live. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks to, God. to God. Amen. So when's the last time you heard a sermon preached on the snakes and the wilderness? When is the last time that you've considered what it means that Moses has been commanded to create this image of a snake and hold it up in front of the people? There are a number of things that I think as we now as modern day Christians and those that have come out of our Protestant heritage struggle with, with relation to this story. When we listen to it in its totality and as we think about what we are sure we think it is saying or he, think we hear we, it is saying when it speaks from a theological standpoint about divine punishment or perhaps even what it means to look upon an image as people that are a part of the Reformation and maybe not directly so, but out of a lineage in which the casting of images and the looking upon material things as that which could too far draw our attention away from God and God itself, or those things that become barriers in our relationship with God, we as a Methodist people often have as a part of our sanctuary, very plain and very simple surroundings. Sometimes the most ornate things within our worship spaces are our windows. But in even of our, some of our predecessor churches or earliest churches, the windows are clear. They come out of a simplicity and an understanding of coming down to a place of essentials and in 
in an acknowledging a unique and unfiltered relationship as we are in prayer and conversation with our God. Images like the casting up of this snake perhaps is a bit of a stretch for us and we wonder and it feels far-fetched and difficult for us to consider or understand. Or even simply the phrase in this Old Testament scripture that says, the Lord sent the poisonous snakes amongst the people and they bit the people. And yet there is a significant invitation in this text and a way to consider in a more complete way what is happening. As I shared just a few moments before, this is not the first time that we are hearing the people of God in a position, in a posture, I would say, of complaint, of blame. It is God's fault we are here. God, it is your fault that we are here in this place, that we are challenged in this way, that we are starving, that we fear for our life that Lord, we feel frightened and afraid. It perhaps sounds like a foolish thing, a foolish posture, a foolish way of being, but when we are honest about our own prayer life and sometimes the way in which we relate to the world around us and beyond us, perhaps it is then not all that far-fetched when we examine ourselves clearly, when we do it in a full sense of consciousness, that we too can be a people that find, look to find blame or look to find complaint. It is this text that is understood and is sometimes called by scholars, the murmurings. The murmurings, meaning the complaints of the Hebrew people. And this complaint, like as in former ones, is a general complaint that our text in the way that it is shared seems to lead directly to some sort of divine punishment. This is another difficult thing that we as perhaps enlightened people who have studied scripture for centuries beyond our predecessors struggle with. Does God in fact punish us? And yet, I have myself found that there are times in pastoral care situations when the simplicity of which we try to express or speak into harm or hurt or the pain of a world around us that is broken, sometimes too quickly we use these phrases and we simplify that which is happening into ways that do not truly acknowledge the depth and breadth of our faith. We ask questions about why do good things happen to bad people? Or we say simple things like, God never gives us anything more than we can handle. And yet in the midst of the griefs and the brokenness and the hardships that we face, these do not sometimes meet the very spiritual needs and the cries that our hearts are offering up. I think an interesting way to back up and to really look at this text once again, to back up and to hear this text once again, is to look at it and to, to read a little bit more intimately what is happening. Is it in fact that God has sent divine punishment? Or is it that the people have already come to believe that they are being punished? The snakes that are amongst them in this way and in this text become an opportunity and truly a wake-up call. They become a wake-up call when their mortality no longer can be taken for granted, their immortality can no longer be taken for granted, and they in fact recognize their own mortality. 
there have been many things around them that have in fact presented incredible challenge. And yet there is a loss of the sense of the larger picture of what God is doing and what God has done. If we are to be honest with ourselves, so very often we are unable to experience God's grace and we are unable to experience a sense of overwhelming joy or perhaps even just contentment when we are busy being in a posture of fault finding, when we are in a position of seeing problems and looking to assign blame. It is not that there are not incredible challenges around us, and it is not that there are not imperfect systems around us. But as we look to find fault, to pass the blame, and to not particularly look at or to see or to acknowledge our own part in the strife or in the division or in the harm that is experienced, when we are not able to do this, we are not able to see our own mistakes, our own faults, to see our own sins. We block the experience of being able to receive that gift of salvation, that gift of forgiveness, that gift of grace. Many times I think that when we look to Jesus, we are inspired by the healing. We are inspired by the ways in which he was able to see and help acknowledge those that felt they had been pushed to the margins. And we find comfort in knowing that there are times when we have been on the margins. There are times when our own illness or the illness of our loved ones, or perhaps the injustice in the world, the witness of Jesus shares with us a way of the writing of the world. But we too must acknowledge our own part in strife and division and harm if we are to also experience that incredible grace. And this is not an easy task. There are those things that we participate in. There are, there are systems and behaviors that we participate in that are not always conscious, but unconscious. But the invitation here, as we hear it in the Gospel of John, the invitation here is that we will understand, we will be able to accept God's full love and forgiveness and grace for us, the ability to live and to walk in new ways, not only as we look up to Jesus as a mentor and as a model, but as one who has offered his own life for the very mistakes the very ways we have allowed ourselves to be blinded to the harm in which we have participated. Is this story about divine judgment or is it rather about that as we look towards that head of the snake, as we look towards the body of Jesus hanging on the cross and we see the ways that we have slandered others, the ways that we have allowed political systems to tear down whole sections of our society, when we have remained silent, when there is injustice around us, when we look at the body of Jesus on the cross, what we see is a God that has loved us so much that God would give his very own life that we might then be free of those things. Free of those things in order then to live and to work and to walk and to pray and to be present with others just as Jesus has been with us. 
It's not easy to talk about our walk with God. It is not easy to talk about the ways in which we have fallen short. But as we so do that, and as so we witness the places where others have demonstrated that grace, have welcomed us back in and have said, start over once again, my child. Live in the fullness of the abundance of life, which I have promised you. Then too, we find that sense of contentment and joy. So let us on this day, let us on this day, give thanks for the grace that has been extended to us. Let us give thanks for the way that this grace has manifest itself in this world. Let us give thanks that we know ourselves not perfect, that we can acknowledge ourselves not perfect, and we can, in fact, be perfected through the gift of the Christ. This is the gift of our message today as we claim the promises of God. In Jesus' name, amen. As we turn to our prayers today, um, you will see that we have a number of prayer updates of individual members and opportunities for us to consider. Um, let me just see if I can help bring that up. Sorry, Gail, I think we just canceled each other out. <laughs> so as we look over our prayers this morning, um, a few things that we definitely want to lift up in this time. Uh, we want to give thanks for the gift of the life of Joyce Mathers um, and for her family, who I believe is actually here with us this day, I think in Sue and Bob, I think I saw that they were here. Um, we received word that Joyce passed uh, midday on Friday, um, and her family was just able to forward that announcement to us. Um, she is, of course, survived by Deb and Bob and Cindy. Um, and there will be memorial services and arrangements made sometime in the future um, and perhaps into the spring, uh, early summer time in which we can gather more safely and we can celebrate her life and also simultaneously uh, Bob's senior's life. Um, so I hope that you will extend your sympathies and um, your prayers of support to all of the extended Mathers family. We are also very grateful to see, um, and I know he's here and he's probably hiding a little bit, um, but that Rick Sivers is here with us. Um, Rick had a major um, lower back surgery this past Monday, um, just Monday, and was actually home pretty quickly um, and is home recovering. Um, he is moving in and is doing so more permanently um, towards the end of this month with his daughter, Jennifer. Um, and so if you would like to reach out to him, um, you can wave to him when we go back into a gallery view. Uh, but also if you'd like to reach out to him, uh, his email and phone number are there by which you can reach him. Um, and Rick, we are so grateful to see you here with us today and grateful for the gift of all the doctors and nurses uh, that um, patiently uh, worked with you and consulted with you over time. Are there other things for which you would have us pray this day? Things for which you would give God thanks, um, moments of grace and thanksgiving, which are important to share as a community of faith? I'm going to turn so I can try and see you a little better. For what would you have us pray today? I hear somebody opening their microphone, but I can't quite see who. Yeah, it is. I I opened mine up. 
Here you are. Um, I just wanted to thank my daughter who fluctuates between Mother Teresa and Nurse Ratchet um, <laughs> for all of the <laughs> care that I've gotten. I'm up, I'm mobile. Um, the pain is a lot gone, but you know, they put 60 staples in my back. <gasps> it's going to take a while for the muscles and everything to calm down. It really is good to see you. It's good to be here. I, you know, apparently I make a pretty quick recovery. Everything looks really, really good down there. That's good to hear. Very, very good to hear. Thank you. For what else would you guys have us pray today? Abby, you left. I saw you a second ago. Oh, it's in the chat. Abby says she would like us to pray for our granddaughters and our family with whom they are worshiping today. Yay. Very so she is with her family and um, waving, barely can see, and her granddaughters are also with us. So um, Abby gives thanks for that. So good to have you guys, Rowan and Bridget and family. And I see there's also a happy birthday wish for Emily um, and Robert, Emily uh, Dufala and Robert Worthman. We're grateful to celebrate those birthdays. And also um, Sue Mathers is asking for prayers for their friend, Jill. Um, Jill's aunt actually passed away yesterday. Thank you so much for sharing that, Sue. Uh, I think we ought to pray for the city of Philadelphia. There is just so many things happening and children being shot and adults. And so I think they need a lot of prayer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Blanche. Um, prayers for the city of Philadelphia um, and especially around issues of violence um, and gun violence and care and concern uh, for the children in particular of our greater area in the city. Thank you so much. Carolyn asked that we would also please pray for her cousin, Ellen, um, Aunt Lou's daughter, uh, who is actually having surgery this coming Friday. Hi, Pastor, it's Patty. Hi, Patty. Hi, I'm just uh, thankful that the vaccines are going well. I am uh, going to get mine tomorrow. A lot of my teacher friends also will be getting theirs tomorrow and this week. And happy to see that many of our church members are um, receiving theirs also. Yeah, I was hoping somebody would say that. Um, <laughs> and I also know I want to ask for prayers also for those that are really frustrated because um, it's they haven't had an opportunity to make an appointment yet or they're not quite it's not quite their turn in line yet um i know that there's a lot of like frustration especially amongst people that are having to go back into workplaces and that feel particularly exposed um so an incredible prayer of gratitude for those of our teachers that are able to be getting shots um for yourself and for a number of other teacher friends of yours and i would say especially for the teachers that we know of and i know of at least one in particular that is super frustrated and having no sense about um when their district might be getting shots or how soon that would come so just this period of um waiting i will say that you know as i was thinking in many ways about um this message right and where we've seen god's grace um, embodied, um, you might not think of, of it this way. Um, you might not perceive of it this way, but frankly, for me, uh, being present with some of our members on Friday and literally seeing this line of like 150 people lined up and then even more so an additional church volunteer that went with me to be present with those persons and make sure we had the right documentation and that, um, that was able to happen in a fairly efficient way. Like, just being able to see that um, I was I was literally giddy with excitement, um, you know, just just absolutely giddy with excitement. So 
Um, for those of you that are still um, out there and are looking for shots or, or for whom this is a difficult time, um, I just want to remind you that in any way that the church can resource you, um, like, please don't hesitate. If, if you need to pray with me because you're frustrated and you're about to lose your mind because you don't know when the next thing is going to happen, please do that too. Um, I am happy to pick up your phone call and just reach out in those ways. Um, it's, um, we're in a, a, a still very transitory time um, and it is still gonna be a while, but there are signs of hope and life and spring all around us. So um, thank you for those of you that have also started to send your spring photos um, of crocuses and of daffodils and of snowdrops that have started emerging out of the ground. Um, what an incredible thing to see all of that. Um, one final prayer that we've been asked to list up, um, a, a prayer of Thanksgiving in particular um, that Debbie was able to see her father, uh, Phil Gretzmacher, in person at the Philadelphia Protestant home um, as they have just recently reopened family visits. Um, so what a gift. Absolutely. What a gift. If there are no others, I can't see or hear anybody else waving or offering anything up. Um, let us go together to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we offer these prayers up to you and perhaps even more in our hearts and in our minds. We ask that as we continue to come to you as your people, that we would not be afraid to offer our full and our authentic selves to you. That as we find joy, but even also as we struggle, that we might know truly that as we pray, you hear all that we have to offer. Forgive us for the times when our words do not reflect the gift of your presence in our life and our knowledge of you. Help us along this journey as we are pilgrims. Help us to spend less time boasting to others, but rather in sharing how you have blessed us in our life. When we become impatient, when our own soul feels only full of complaint, help us in our prayer to be reframed by you, to acknowledge the part that we ourselves have had in such things, but also to hear and to listen carefully that we might know how you are opening to us a new opportunity and to see the very gifts of your grace and presence that are already with us. Be present now with all of those whom we have mentioned those families that are grieving on the loss of loved ones, those who are recovering from surgeries and looking to undergo surgeries or procedures in the weeks to come, those for whom do not even know how to pray, perhaps because they struggle with depression or addiction or unemployment. Be present with those who are frustrated but also let us offer the gifts and the talents that we have, even if it is in the simplicity of the understanding of certain pieces of technology. We pray for those that still find themselves in harm's way or recovering from natural disaster. And Lord, we continue to pray for our children the children of our own child care centers and school districts, but also children all across this larger area. Help us to look more carefully towards the roots of the violence in our community and work to stamp these out. Whether it is in our complacency or whether it is in our acceptance of certain things, Help us to see and to envision a more complete and abundant future for all. 
We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we look towards our announcements, just a very quick reminder um, that our worship music and arts committee will actually have a meeting immediately following worship on the Zoom link, which is below and which you will have received an email. Um, and then also for those of you that have been a part of our food ministry conversation last month or actually might have interest in what is happening in the very local community um, and things that we can do to additionally be of assistance, um, you are invited to join in and follow up with us this evening at six o'clock. Um, that will use our regular Sunday morning worship link and you can find it there. And what a wonderful opportunity to witness to God's grace and also the blessing and provision that God has offered us in our lives. Um, also another wonderful invitation, uh, you are invited to join our gospel workshop tomorrow. Um, this is a, a teaching uh, opportunity and an opportunity to do some learning, but also to be touched and inspired perhaps uh, by a genre of music that you have not spent much time uh, maybe getting to know quite so well, um, but we are blessed to be able to co-host Lonnie Norwood, who will be um, coming tomorrow at 7.30. And if you are interested in this event and haven't already registered, please um, go ahead and uh, click on that link. And if you have trouble getting through, please get in touch with myself or Gail, um, and we can make sure that you're registered for that event. Um, there are a number of other announcements which you can continue to look through at your convenience about the uh, continued Lenten service schedule um, and <clears throat> another musical opportunity, um, as well as just some invitations to be thinking and considering as we move through the season of Lent. Um, we are grateful <clears throat> to be able to have gathered here together, and we are grateful um, that our ministry and the sharing of our gifts and our resources together has enabled uh, this work. We give thanks for the ways that you offer yourself in your time and in your talent, much of that virtually this day, but in the way that you share your time and your, your talents um, and your finances to enable this to happen. Um, let us turn together to our closing hymn, um, number 2171 in the faith we sing as we turn to we are called and um, this is a wonderful video that's been put together if you didn't print out the hymn um, the words will actually be in the chat if you wanted to follow along the words will not be actually in the video because we were able to do something else that's super cool um, but uh, you can follow the words along in the chat if you would like Can you see it? I can see it. All right. And um, Abby and Rich would both like the, you to know that this is for the glory of God. And Abby especially would like you to know that she's thinking of her brother and her mother who loved the Micah 6, chapter 8 um, a scripture, which is in this hymn. Our final hymn for today. We are called.
So all hatred and blindness will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. Sisters and brothers, united in love, we are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. And so let us go from this place, recognizing that Jesus has been held up, that we might humbly know our dependence on God. We might know our faults and sins, but we will not be intimidated by them. And we will know that we have the gift of new starts each day as we invite Jesus into our prayers and into our lives. For God did so love the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. <laughs>